I want you to make sure you have the bikini bottom genetics paper in front of you. I'm going to do several examples with you and then you are going to complete this sheet on your own and turn in. Whatever you do not finish, you are responsible for finishing on your own. Alrighty, anytime you get confused, refer back to the notes that you took on page 74. So, let's zoom in so everybody can see. Number one says, for each genotype below, indicate whether it is heterozygous by writing a H-E or homozygous by writing an O. So remember, genotype are the letters that represent the gene. I'm going to put in parentheses two letters or two alleles. It's the same thing. All righty. So remember, if it's homozygous, you put an H-O. If it's heterozygous, you put an H-E. Remember, hetero means different. Homo means same. All right, I'm going to do a couple examples with you, and then you're going to continue on finishing on your own. Okay, so capital, capital. They are the same, so therefore that is homozygous. Say homozygous. Homozygous. Then, this one here, are they different? Yes, so therefore different is heterozygous, and you put an H-E. Now that I did two examples with you, pause the video and complete. Make sure you answer the question, which of the genotypes in number one, so that means these here, would be considered pure breed. If you forgot what pure breed is, go back to your notebook on page 73. The next question, which of the genotypes in number one will be hybrids? If you forgot what this vocabulary word means as well, go back to 73 and you'll be able to answer these questions. So right now, pause the video, answer number one, and then come back to the video. Next question, question number two. I'm going to scroll it up so we can see. Let me do this all three. Number two says, determine the phenotype of each genotype using information provided. Remember, I'm going to highlight. The phenotype is what we see with our eyes. So therefore, either yellow or blue. The genotype are the letters that represent the gene. So two alleles, okay? So you always wanna make a key. We already know what letters we're using and this first one we're using Y's. So yellow body color is dominant. So what type of Y will represent yellow body if it's dominant? Yes, a capital Y. Make sure you show a drastic change of the letters so I would not mark it wrong. 
if yellow is dominant, that means blue is what case letter? Exactly. Why? So it says determine the phenotype of each genotype. So we're not done. These are the genotypes. We need to know the phenotypes of those genotypes. So capital Y, capital Y, what, will this, what physical trait will we see? Exactly. Yellow body color. A capital lowercase, what will you see? Remember, anytime you have one capital or two capitals, you will always show that dominant trait. So therefore, that will be what? Yellow. Then the next one are two small Y's. Let's go back to the key. Two small Y's will give you what body color? Blue. Pause the video. Do this one on your own. Next, number three, it says for each phenotype, give the genotypes that are possible for Patrick. Once again, I'm going to highlight because we need to make sure we know these vocabulary words. So phenotype here is tall because that's what we see with our eyes and short. The genotypes, nope, wrong color. The genotype in this will be the letters, all right? So that's what we need to write down. Remember the genotypes, for every trait, we need to have two because we have what? Two parents, okay? So therefore, you're gonna write the genotype here all right, in the genotype here. Okay, so let's get started. So tall. A tall head, the capital T, is dominant. So what combination of letters will give me tall? Capital T, capital T. Is that the only way you can have a tall head? Nope, because remember I said, even if you have one dominant, that dominant trait will be expressed. So therefore, that's another possibility, okay? So both of these genotypes will give you what phenotype? Tall, okay? Now for short, what's the only way possible to show or have the gene genotype for short. Exactly. Both of them has to be small. So what I want you to do now, since I did one example with you, I want you to finish number three on your own. Pause the video. Now we're going to do number four. We're working our way up to more difficult problems. So number four is a word problem. But remember, we still need to read everything and make sure you highlight. All right, so it says, I'm going to read it and then we're going to highlight. It says, SpongeBob SquarePants recently met Sponge Susie Round Pants at a dance. SpongeBob is heterozygous for his square shape, but Susie is round. Create a Punnett square to show the possibilities that will result if SpongeBob and Sponge Susie had children. Hint, read number two. So they tell you go back up to number, going back up to number two to see what letter do we use for 
square shape and round. So at this time, go to number two. What letter is it? Exactly, an S. So before we start anything, we need to make a key. Big S, small S. Okay? Now, it doesn't say in this reading which one is dominant, but we can figure it out. Let's go to our highlight. All right, so it says that SpongeBob is heterozygous for what? Square shape. So if it's heterozygous, is that different or same? Correct, that's different. So therefore you wanna write a capital S, lowercase s. Since that capital is there, which is dominant, square or round? So read it again. SpongeBob is heterozygous for square shape. Since square is being expressed and we have one capital letter there, which is dominant, that means the dominant trait is what? So therefore, if it's not square, then it is round. So anytime that it gives you heterozygous, you can determine which letter is dominant because dominant is always expressed. So therefore, whatever the question says that heterozygous is expressing right here, square shape, that's going to be dominant because the dominant letter always overpowers the recessive. Okay. Now it says sponge Susie is round. So what's the only way of showing a recessive trait? Exactly. Both of them must be small. So we're going to bring the parents down and show it properly. So we know SpongeBob is capital S lowercase s. We put an x there showing that we're crossing them. And then you put a lowercase s, lowercase s, because that what sponge Susie is because she's round. Are we done there? Nope, we just got started. Now that we have the parents, what is needed to make babies? Exactly, sex cells. So therefore, only one allele for each trait is in the sex cell. So now we have to do what? Separate the letters to write our gametes on the outside of the Punnett square. Okay? So let's take this one. Capital S, lowercase s. s. So you see how I'm making a drastic big difference of my S's? You need to do the same thing so I won't mark your answers wrong because I need to be able to tell the difference. So we did this parent. Then the next one, small s, small s, right? Now it's time to bring everything over and everything down. Big s, big s, small s, small s. Bring everything down, small s, Small s, small s, small s. All right, so it says list of possible genotypes. Remember, genotypes are the letters. So you're going to take what we have here and list the possibilities. So I see that right there. So therefore, the cabalet word that is heterozygous because hetero means different. So we're halfway done because both of these are the same. You only write it down one time. What else do we see inside? The remainder are homozygous what, since they're both small? Exactly. Homozygous recessive. Are we done? No. We only did genotype. So now it's time to do phenotypes. So big S, little s will give you what physical trait? Go back to the key. 
Big S always dominate. So therefore, this phenotype will be square. Both of these are small. So go back to your key. This would give you round. Are we done there? No. We now have to get the percentages of what we just figured out. So B says, what are the chances of having a child square shape? All right. So this one has at least one capital, so that's square. This one has at least one capital. All right. So therefore, these two will have what shape? Square. So therefore, you will put two out of what? What's my total? One, two, three, four. We have a total of four boxes. Two out of four. Let's use some money here. If I have two quarters, how much money is that? Exactly, 50 cent. So therefore, that's 50%. Because each box represents 25%. Go back to quarters. You've had two quarters, 50%. All right, now we're going to round. Okay, so how many of them will be round? And remember, round is recessive. So you must have two recessive S's. We have two recessive S's here, one, and we have two recessive S's here, two. So therefore, we have two out of four, which is 50%. Now I'm gonna go to even a, an extension, because sometimes they ask us for a ratio. Okay, so we're going to write down, I'm going to use my colors again, the genotypic ratio. We use red for genotype. So, how many heterozygous do we have? Let's count them up. Heterozygous, one. Is this heterozygous? No. Is this heterozygous? No. Heterozygous, two. All right, so we have two of those. Then you put a colon for your ratio. All right, so then... What other genotypes do you see? Homozygous recessive, homozygous recessive. How many do you see? Two. So that is your genotypic ratio because we have capital S, little s, little s, little s. Okay? Then if it asks you for, let's change the color because we're talking about phenotype now. If it ever asks you for the phenotypic ratio, you do the same thing, but you're counting what we see with our eyes. So how many will be square? Let's count. One, two. How many will be round? One, two. So is the ratio the same? with the genotype and the phenotype? Yes, it's a two to two, two to two, two to two. But will it always be that way? No. What I want you to do, I want you now to work out the remainder of the problems on your own. What I want you to make sure you do, highlight vocabulary words. Once you highlight vocabulary words, make your key. Once you make your key, figure out the genotypes of the parents. Once you know the genotypes of the parents, fill in the pun square and answer these questions. Anytime you get confused, Rewind the video, watch it again, or look at your notes on page 74, okay? This is all possible, okay? If you really can't figure this out, go back and watch that video that you watched before coming to this worksheet. This is all possible. You can do it.